today I'd like to pause a moment and revisit one of my most controversial takes from the past. I'm talking, of course, about my video detailing the scientific evidence that Tylenol is dangerous and mostly useless. I'm not even kidding. A lot of you guys really hated that video. Uh, despite the booing, though, I am right. Uh, reams of research show that Tylenol, also known as paracetamol or acetaminophen, but which I am just going to call acetaminophen throughout the rest of this video, uh, is barely better than a sugar pill for most types of pain management, like back pain, toothaches, headaches, uh, colds. Meanwhile, it is very easy to overdose on it and kill yourself or royally fuck up your liver. The therapeutic index, or TI, illustrates how dangerous a drug is based upon how much you have to take to feel better versus how much you have to take to overdose. With the larger the number, the safer the drug. The example example I used in my previous video is the opioid uh, remifentanil, which has a TI of 33,000. Cocaine has a TI of 15. Acetaminophen has a TI somewhere between 3 and 10. So worse than cocaine. If you want to know more, including links to every single study I reference, I recommend you go watch that video because now I need to move on to the important task of today, which is defending acetaminophen from the stupidest fucking people on the planet. I knew that living under an anti-science authoritarian government would be dangerous and exhausting, but I failed to predict just how frustrating it would be to have to continually defend people and institutions and concepts I do not care for. I do not care for the comedy stylings of late night hosts or The View. I do not care for the New York Times or Columbia University. And obviously, I do not care for acetaminophen. But this week, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s brainworm decided to blame acetaminophen for causing autism. And on this channel, we put scientific accuracy above our petty grievances, usually. I'm human. But yes, because of that, I am here to tell you that no, acetaminophen probably does not cause autism. Wait, probably? Yeah, probably. On this channel, we also put scientific accuracy above overly simplistic assertions. Usually. I'm human. So anyway, back at the start of RFK Jr.'s nomination to head of the Department of Health and Human Services, he promised that he would fund studies to uncover the true cause of autism, which he estimated would conclude, oh, I don't know, around September, because that's how morons think science works. Sure, humanity has spent a century trying to understand and treat autism, but one Nepo baby with zero understanding of the scientific method will solve all this to do in five months, a timeline that he can accurately lay out before he's even started. At the time, we all just rolled our eyes because as I've detailed repeatedly in the past, RFK Jr. is a brain-dead anti-vaxxer. It seemed pretty obvious that he was going to spend those five months snorting that science funding up his nose before announcing that the answer is vaccines cause autism. What he's actually done is, I must admit, much funnier. By announcing that the cause is acetaminophen, RFK has done several hilarious things. He's invited a defamation lawsuit from a corporation worth approximately $90 billion, and even better, he's absolutely infuriated his anti-vax base. We didn't wait 20 years for Bobby to finally speak in the get served Tylenol as an answer, wrote the Georgia Coalition for Vaccine Choice on their official scientific journal, i.e. their Facebook page. If that's all we hear, is that the end? Not the Marisol, not aluminum, not MMR, not Hep B, not the insane schedule pushed after pharma got liability protection? Are we supposed to just forget? Ars Technica has more examples if you'd like to make some popcorn and enjoy the rage, but I have to admit my bemusement was marred by the sudden realization that it's going to be a nightmare if some psychotic anti-vaxxer gets their hands on a gun and assassinates RFK Jr. Can you imagine this authoritarian regime with their very own dead Kennedy? We'd never hear the end of it. So why did RFK Jr. pick acetaminophen? It's not as random as you might think. The drug was already previously considered a good candidate for something that might cause autism because it's one of the few drugs that pregnant people are allowed to safely take. 
When you're pregnant, there are a lot of drugs that are known or suspected to elevate the risk to uh, the parent or the fetus. Acetaminophen is one of the few that is considered safe. And so a lot of pregnant people take it for uh, all of the various aches and pains and colds and common ailments that come along with pregnancy. That means it makes sense to make sure that it's not causing issues that we wouldn't necessarily notice if we didn't very carefully study it. And so some early studies were performed, and a few of them did notice that there might be a correlation between acetaminophen and a slight increased risk of a child being born with ADHD or autism. To figure out if they were onto something, the U.S. National Institutes of Health funded the largest study on acetaminophen and autism, ADHD, and intellectual disability ever done, cooperating with Swedish scientists to gather and analyze data from a whopping 2.5 million children, logging their parents' usage of Tylenol via antenatal and prescription records. They even controlled for an eye-watering list of potential covariates from age of the parent to birth location to household income to use of other drugs. And here's where things get really interesting. Had they just stopped there, they would have seen the very same slight correlation between acetaminophen usage during pregnancy and children born with ADHD and or autism. But they didn't stop there. They also performed a sibling analysis. By observing each child's full sibling where appropriate, they could account for unobserved genetic and environmental confounders. And in doing so, that apparent risk of ADHD and autism completely disappeared. Not only did this absolutely massive study find no evidence for any link between acetaminophen and autism or ADHD, but they did find a possible explanation for why those earlier, smaller studies did find a marginal increase in risk. That's just how good science is done. So what bombshell study did RFK debut to rebut this extremely convincing evidence? None. I know, you're shocked, aren't you? No, instead of funding an even larger, more in-depth study, he funded a systematic review. I talk about the systematic reviews often here, but just to remind you, a systematic review combines multiple existing studies together, weighting them based on quality, controlling for their differences, and showing the conclusion they ultimately point to. When they're done correctly, they provide a helpful overview of the current state of research about a given topic. When done incorrectly, they provide a helpful piece of propaganda to say whatever you want them to say about a given topic. Can you guess which one this is? I'll defer to Gideon MK, aka health nerd, an epidemiologist who wrote up a helpful explainer on this review earlier this month. The authors chose seven studies to include. One large study that found no link, one small, weak study that did find a link, the massive study I just discussed that found no link, another large study that found a potential link between acetaminophen and just one subtype of autism, but not autism in general, one study that found a possible increase for boys, but not for girls, nor for all children together, and two more of those smaller, earlier studies that found a link but did not control for siblings. So these researchers looked at all of these studies, decided that those earlier studies with poor controls were more convincing than that massive study that found no link and explained those earlier findings. And they concluded that, yeah, acetaminophen, that might cause autism. We should we should change the rules on this. So there are a few aspects of all of this that I want to highlight. First is something I touched on back in April, which is RFK and the Republicans continued fear-mongering over autism. Autism is a spectrum. It can be debilitating, and uh, both those with debilitating autism and their caretakers need uh, and deserve support. On the other end are normal fucking people with jobs and hobbies and families, and frankly, a better claim to the national stage than Robert fucking Kennedy Jr., An autism diagnosis is not a death sentence. If a crucial medical intervention did mean a slight increased risk of autism, the answer would not be to ban that intervention. It would be for the pregnant person to talk to their doctor and develop a plan to mitigate risks and increase quality of life for both the pregnant person and their fetus. And that leads me straight to my final point, which is that a large part of this is about controlling women. 
the people most likely to get pregnant. Women are constantly vilified for everything they do when pregnant. Uh, the drugs they take, the activities they do, the food they eat, the alcohol they either do or do not consume. I've seen women blamed both ways. Uh, remember when RFK also suggested pregnant women shouldn't get the COVID vaccine, despite the fact that pregnancy is literally currently on the list of risk factors for catching COVID that make a person eligible to get the COVID vaccine here in the U.S.? This is yet another way to blame women for something as simple as taking a damned painkiller while dealing with the constant pain that comes with incubating an entire human being. It's all bullshit. You're smart, you knew that, but hopefully now you know why it's bullshit, and I hope you carry that forth. Let your pregnant friends know that, yeah, they can take acetaminophen without stressing out about harming their fetus even if acetaminophen is basically useless trash. What? I'm human. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks. <laughs>